Welcome everybody. Uh, we're going to be looking at RPG games today because RPGs are so vast I've chosen to leave them to the third playlist in the series. What I've also chosen to do is a, uh, take about this in a slightly different way. Uh, on Moodle you'll find the, uh, the Game Maker demo version which is available for you. Uh, it will contain all the things you're about to see in this video. Uh, you'll see that uh, there are a th series of sprites that have been set up for you, a background, a script, and objects and a room that's already been set up for you um, but they're going to be completely uh, it's going to be blank all you're going to find in your version is a blank um, blank room with the trees uh, already set in and some of the objects placed we're going to go through just some fundamental basics making sure we're comfortable with how we got here first and we're going to follow along the first thing that we've got is a series of sprites and you'll find that there's a demo file available for you should you want to download these sprites yourselves. All I did to create these sprites is the same thing we did for the platform game. I edited the sprite, I created these from strip, I selected my, uh, my file that I'd got here, I just happened to have one, I'd removed the background and then just using the techniques that we've seen before, grab those first three and then also stretch the animation out. So instead of just being three frames long, I made it nine frames long. I did that for front, for left, for right, and for back. I've also created two versions of trees, just for aesthetic purposes, and I've also created a potion that we're going to use to give us some health. I've also created a background, which is something we haven't yet done, but that works in exactly the same way as any other object or any other sprite. You create your background, you load or you edit in exactly the same way you would anything at all. And then the way you attach a background into your room, I'll show you in a second. What I've also done is we're going to be making use of scripts. A script is nothing more than a recyclable bit of a bit of code that you create. Because our character stopping is going to be the same instruction over and over and over again, we're going to be looking at scripts and we have a series of objects that we set up. So as I mentioned, the first thing we're going to do is in our room, we're going to go to the background tab and making sure that the background is selected and then you've got the background, background zero, and you've chosen grass from the background and that will change your background to follow this nice grass and because it horizontally and vertical tiles it will uh, it will tile as it goes and I've deliberately chosen a grass texture that doesn't look obvious when it does tile you can also stretch should you want to stretch it I think that looks awful so we're not going to do that what I've also done is I've enabled the use of views exactly the same way we do with our platform games enable the use of views visible when room starts follow the player and make sure we follow it at 320 and 240, which if you remember was half of the width and height of our view on the screen. What I want to show you next is with the player itself. The player has a series of events already preset up. We're going to go through them individually. The first thing I wanted to mention is on the create. I've created this little bit of code called starting settings. You might wonder how have I called it starting settings. That is when you create a piece of code. If you create a comment as normal, you know that that leaves a comment for you. But if you put three slashes instead, what that instead does is it names um, a piece of code for you. Because what we're going to be doing is so large, it pays to be able to see these things at a glance. And all that does is just identifies the individual piece of code that we can use. Useful tip. So with starting settings, all I've got here is a piece identifying that it's starting settings. I've also got a piece of code that um, starts an easy to change speed for the player. So I've created a variable called player speed, as you can see on this line here. Player speed sets it to five. The reason why we've set it to five is a lot of the time, rather than saying it's five, it's five, it's five, it's five, and moving up, down, left, and right, this just means set it to whatever player speed is. Meaning if I wanted to change how quickly my character moves at any point, I just change that variable and my code will filter through. I also wanted to make sure that the animation stops playing as soon as the game loads, so it loads and stands still. I've also created a max HP for my character, which is to 100, and then his current HP, which is 30, because that character's going to start. He's had a bit of a bang on his head, and he's a little bit injured when the game loads. What I've also got is the player uh, an alarm. We're using alarm zero, just like we've done before, and I'm waiting for a second. The reason why I'm waiting for a second is I wanted a message to pop up. Out my head, what happened? So let's see what that actually looks like in my version of the game. You'll see that as the game loads, it will wait for one second. Doing a bit of an antivirus scan, just confirming that there's nothing bad in this executable file. So it waits for one second. Out my head, what happened? And we have this little message that pops up. So I'm going to talk through this bit by bit, and I'm going to make sure that we completely follow along. Thank you, antivirus. You can go away now. 
Antivirus. Antivirus, Avast. Hmm. Better. Okay. So what we've also got next is the collision with tree one. What I wanted to have here is um, this tree in our RPG game is either a spiritual tree or is something that the tree uh, that the character remembers, and uh, the tree gives them a potion. So what I have here is a piece of code, and this piece of code provides what's going on here. I've got a show message piece of code which says set it to 500 by 500. In reality, I don't actually think that's doing anything at the moment, so you can disregard that. Um, I was testing out a few of the different pieces of code, so I'm going to comment that out, I'm going to comment that out. Those aren't doing anything at the minute, but you can see that show message underscore ext. That gives you your message, and it also gives you three different buttons that you could have. So you could have up from one, two, or three. I've just been experimenting with that as I've been developing this. You can do the same. I'm also creating a variable that's called touch tree. And the idea is touch trees, it's keeping a record when this question pops up, this tree, I remember this tree, shall I touch it? Then we're saying if they answered yes on the text box that will appear, so if they touch if touch tree equals true, then we're going to create a potion because they touched the tree and a magic potion appeared. So our message pops up out of my head what happened. I'm then going to make contact with the tree. This tree, I remember this tree, shall I touch it? If I click no. That's given us a false value, so that returned false into our program. So now we're going to go up here, we're going to return true by clicking yes, and a potion will appear. What you'll also find, and I'll show you the code for this in a second, is when I make contact with a potion, my health goes up. We've got this really nice health bar, which I'll talk about in a moment. You'll also notice I'm using this script, and I'm going to use this a lot. As I mentioned over here, this script, scr underscore stop player ani, what this job what this code does and the way you add a script to your um, to your code, by the way, is this one here, execute script, and then it says which script do you wish to execute, and you can execute the script there. What this script does, and I'll talk about now, is this code here. It says resets the animation to the first frame, image index equals zero, stops animation from playing, so image underscore speed equals zero, and sets object speed to zero, speed equals zero. So the idea there is Anytime you contact anything in this game, it's always going to do exactly the same thing. There's no point copy pasting it out, recycle it, and that's where scripts are useful. So I'll just leave that on screen for a second. Well, we've got image index equals zero, image speed equals zero, and speed equals zero to actually stop our player when they collide with something. So let's just double check and show me what that does, because I've set that up every time I key release something and every time I collide with a solid object like a tree. It's just running that script there. So that happens every time I release my right, left, up and down keys. Runs exactly the same script. So if I show you when I uh, release left, it just runs that script. Same for release up, release right, release down. Identical in every way. It's just calling that same script. Really easy for you to set up. I'll also show you how we do uh, the left key. So when I press the left key, you will notice that I'm using keyboard left, whereas in the past I've shown you key press. Key press is great as an event, but that waits for you to press a key and then by holding it down doesn't do anything more. You have to release and then press again for it to happen. Keyboard, which is the one I've chosen to use here, is always detecting. Is it held down? Is the left key, right key, up key, is it held down? And if it is, do something. So this is why I've chosen to use it here, is it gives you a much smoother style of play. You might have experimented with these in the platform game. If you haven't, have a fiddle with the platform game and swap out your key presses for keyboards and see what you get. So the code that you have here, we're setting the speed to whatever player speed is. As you remember before we set that to 5. We're setting the direction to 180 because we know that 180 is left. And then we're setting the sprites to display the player going left. And we're setting the image speed uh, to one, which is play our animation. And every time we release those keys, image speed is getting set back to zero to stop it. So again, if you need to pause that, you're more than welcome to pause that to copy it long. From here, you should be able to guess what up, right, and down are going to be. Extra brownie points if you do manage to do that. But if not, I'll show you in a second. Three, two, one. That's enough of that. So up is exactly the same, but suddenly you notice direction has changed to 90 because we're going up. Going right, direction has changed to zero because we're going right, and you've guessed it by now, down. The only difference is going to be 270. We could have put this in a script, but I've chosen not to. 
What you can also see now is my collision events with my tree one. So this was our magical tree we've spoken about. So just to confirm, we're stopping our player animation and we had that piece of code before. I remember this tree, if I touch the tree, generate for me a potion. Then we also have tree two, which just when I touch that stops in exactly the same way I have for any other kind of event. And then when I touch the potion, with the other thing, delete the other thing, and then our HP is going to go up by 50, because every time we get a potion, it's going to go up by 50. Last thing I just want to show you very quickly, guys, um, is the way that we have uh, set up the collision detection for our sprites. Now, the idea of collision detection, if I just open up player F here and I edit that sprite, what you can see, uh, sorry, under the modify mask, I should say, the modify mask, this is the collision mask, and by default, it's set to precise collision to checking. What precise collision checking means is for every frame of the animation, marry up to that collision mask. So use this mask as a point of collision. What I've done for our trees is I've changed the, the collision mask. So I've modified that. What I've instead said is I've set it to manual and I've drawn a small little box just around the base of the tree. And I've just done that. And I've done that for tree two and tree one. So what this allows us to do is it will only collide with that point of the tree. The reason for this is to represent the idea of as we go around our trees, we still want to be able to go behind them like so, but we don't want to go to where the base of the tree is like that. If you do find for whatever reason that your character appears at the wrong depth, so the character either appears um, behind and should be in front or vice versa, this is where the depth value comes in. So if I click on OBJ play, all of your objects will have a depth of zero. If you want things to be closer to you, this works exactly like uh, the depth if you're looking into a swimming pool. So if you want something, something is deep, something is further away, give something a depth of one, it will appear further away from the camera. If you want something to be closer, give it a depth of minus one and it will appear, appear closer to you. Okay. By default, otherwise it just says which order you placed it into the room.